Hello everyone and welcome back to Set to Six and today what I've got for you is the next episode of the character background and prediction series. So far we've looked at Don Corneo, we've looked at Aerith, we've looked at Zack and the most recent episode we looked at Barrett so if you haven't seen that definitely check it out. But for this episode what I thought I'd do is I'd look at a character that while he doesn't have a massive amount of scenes overall in the compilation what he does have is quite a, an important position as kind of like the font of all of the information that we get. Like he kind of gives us most of the information that we get in the original game as regards the cycle of life on the planet, information about the ancients, and he's critical at points in Final Fantasy VII. So yeah, this episode we're going to be looking at Bugenhagen. Don't forget to drop a like on the video, subscribe for future content, check out all the other vids that I've got going on the channel, like I say. I've got a fair few of these character background and predictions videos, loads of other theories, and The Big Seven, which is the series where I interview your favourite content creators. And yeah, every like, every sub, it's massively appreciated as I try and push the channel up to 1,000 subs. So yeah, get involved. But let's get on with it. So the first time that we see Bugenhagen is in Before Crisis. And the first scene we get for Bugenhagen is him talking to Nanakai about a ritual regarding the planet and this being the year that the ritual happens. Uh, but Nanakai is not very happy, he's not really interested in taking part in the ritual. And as the story progresses, you find out why. We're not going to jump too deep into that one, we'll save that for Nanakai Red 13's video. And yeah, we'll just carry on with the Bugenhagen stuff. And once Nanakai's left after this conversation, Buchenhagen talks about how he's a bit concerned about the traditions of the village being forgotten. Now, not long after this, Reno and the Turks turn up to... Basically, they're on the mission to capture Red 13, Nanakai, for Hojo. But they take a small diversion and go and speak to Buchenhagen, and Reno asks him about Vado. Now, Buchenhagen explains that Vado had been to see him to ask about his daughter. And in this conversation, we learn about a materia that's within Elfe, and that Pajito, who's the man who's taken over Avalanche, so to speak, he's trying to access that materia, but we'll come to that a little bit later on as well. But Vido's daughter, Elfe, is the one who's got the materia in her, and he's trying to find a way to safely extract the materia, but Bugenhagen wasn't really able to help him. Another thing we learn is that this materia holds a powerful summon within it, capable of scorching the surface of Gaia and destroying all life entirely. And this is Zirconiad. Now, we get a few more scenes that pass with the Turks and like the ongoing story, and eventually Avalanche arrive at Cosmo Canyon being led by Fajito. And Fajito obviously goes to speak to Bugenhagen as well, and Fajito says that the world is certainly doomed as things are at the minute, and due to this he means to return everything to the live stream. Bugenhagen responds saying that everything inevitably has a form that will eventually perish, and humans are just a part of this cycle, and therefore Fajito's plan will accomplish nothing. And Fajito threatens to interfere with the right that's going to happen between Nanakai and Dain, Dine, Dine, Dine? Well, I'm not sure, but he, he threatens to interfere in that, and after he runs off, Bugenhagen speaks again, and he speaks about how everything occurs according to the will of the planet, and that maybe the planet still has some use for humanity and that this is going to give him more to think about. And that's everything that we get in Before Crisis. Obviously the story with Fajito and everything like that carries on, but as far as Bugenhagen's involvement, I'm pretty sure that's all that we get in Before Crisis. If I've missed anything, please do let me know in the comments below. But this then brings us directly into the original continuity of Final Fantasy VII. The first time that we meet Bugenhagen is once we finally reach Cosmo Canyon, which is Red 13, Nanakai's hometown. Bugenhagen takes the party and explains the basics of planetary science to them. He explains all about the life stream and how all living things are born from and eventually return to the life stream. He also introduces the core concept of the life stream itself being an entity, and that if the damage that's caused by Shimra's Mako usage isn't stopped, and the life stream itself will die, and this will take the planet along with it. And these are vital core concepts to Final Fantasy VII. There are far more layers to the life stream and the way it functions that have been added onto it throughout the compilation, even with the addition of a cosmological life stream that the planet itself is a part of. 
but the core concept of the live stream being the source of all life on Gaia, and a life force in itself that can die, is kind of explored for the very first time here, at least in any detail. Barrett spoke about it in kind of like his loose understanding of it earlier on, and where did he get all of his knowledge from? Cosmo Canyon. So, yeah. But it is possible that Bugenhagen in this speech is hinting towards these concepts from the compilation that we get that expand on the live stream. And the first hint could potentially be the black hole that we see in the first cinematic as we first enter the observatory. It kind of indicates that he's got this wider knowledge of the universe because there isn't a black hole in the solar system. If there was, there'd be a big problem. So, you know, we we learn from this that they've got this wider knowledge of the cosmos in general. But the second one, and the one that's more substantial, like the black hole's not really a thing, but the more substantial one is a line when Bugenhagen is describing the life stream and how life interacts with it. And Bugenhagen says, not only those of humans, but everything on this planet. In fact, all living things in the universe are the same. Now, it's a really small line. It doesn't go into any additional detail. This is the very first hint that we get of a cosmological life stream, a life stream that spans the universe, or at least that this system of life and life stream exists everywhere that there is life in the universe. It's, it's the first indication that we get of that. Now, continuing on with the original story, Bugenhagen's an expert, the expert on the planet and the life stream. And Kate Sith talks about how Bugenhagen was once a Shimra employee, not working on weapons or materia or power, but it seems like he worked more on theoretical sciences, things regarding the life stream and the planet and maybe the, maybe the universe itself and the ancients. We also learn that a lot of the equipment that Bugenhagen uses in his observatory was gifted to him from Professor Gast. Now, once we've spoken to Bugenhagen and we've had kind of like the, the show in the planetarium type thing, his observatory, Bugenhagen then has to guide Nanakai on a personal journey after he learns that Nanakai resents his father Seto, believing him to be a coward who fled when the Gi tribe attacked Cosmo Canyon. Bugenhagen guides Nanakai through the caves where the attack took place and leads him to the realization that Seto was a hero who single-handedly held off the Gi and sacrificed himself to protect Cosmo Canyon. And even to this day, his spirit still guards the land and looks over it. Now, we get, obviously, the really emotional moment for Red 13, but we'll explore Red 13 side of things in his video when we eventually get round to it. We then move on from Cosmo Canyon as the story pushes us onwards. And the next time that we meet Bugenhagen is after the summoning of Meteor, after Aerith's death back at Cosmo Canyon. But before we dive into that, one thing I want to ask is, who do you want to see in the next episode in this series? Like I say, so far we've looked at Don Corneo, Aerith, Zack and Barrett. I've also done this episode now on Bugenhagen. Who do you want to see next in this series? So head down to the comments, let me know which character you want me to look at next. But back to Cosmo Canyon. Now, Bugenhagen gives us a place to store the huge material, but before that he speaks to Cloud about helping him. And he speaks to Cloud about Cloud seeming to have lost his way. And he says to him that, is there something that you've buried or you've forgotten? Remember it, and most certainly that will be what you're all looking for. And this is Bugenhagen kind of in a weird, circular way, touching on another one of the core concepts of Final Fantasy VII, which is memories. Bugenhagen then asks to be taken to the Forgotten Capital to try and work out what it was that Aerith was trying to do, what her goal was. And once we arrive there and we go off on a mission to retrieve the key, the ancient key, Bugenhagen uses the key to access a piece of ancient machinery. And this machinery shows Bugenhagen and the party Aerith's last moments. And in the images, he sees that the white material is glowing, which suggests that Aerith was successful in praying for Holy and activating the Materia. But he informs the party also that while it has been activated, something seems to be getting in its way, because we've not seen any, any, any evidence that Holy is active, nothing's happened. And everyone concludes that Sephiroth is the one that's stopping Holy from taking effect. 
At this point, Bugenhagen splits off from the party, he returns to Cosmo Canyon, and the party go straight off to deal with Diamond Weapon. But the journey overall has taken its toll on Bugenhagen, and when he gets back to Cosmo Canyon, he falls ill. And before you go on to the end of the game, you can go back to Cosmo Canyon. Uh, and Nanakai has one final conversation with Bugenhagen, where Bugenhagen tells him to continue on his journey with Cloud, to explore the world and to experience as much of it as he can. And then Bugenhagen passes away, ending his involvement in the story. Now that's the original continuity of Final Fantasy VII, but what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the remake. So at this stage, we've not seen Bugenhagen yet, and we're probably not going to see him until very late in Remake Part 2. I mean, the best estimation is that we'll probably start in Nibelheim with the flashback, and we'll finish Part 2 in Nibelheim. So we'll have only just met Bugenhagen, although it does give us the possibility for him to have a big impact just before the end of the second game. So that could be quite an interesting way for things to go. But yeah, everything that I've got here is speculation, there are a few things that we can take from what we already know and use that to make a few solid predictions regarding how Bugenhagen's going to be involved in the future. And the first thing to look at is the expansion of narrative threads that Bugenhagen only barely touched on that are now core concepts within the compilation. And the first of these would be the comments from earlier that suggests that he has some knowledge that the universe follows the same life slash life stream structure that we looked at earlier. Now this suggests to me that Bugenhagen could know more about the planetary cycle of the live stream, but on top of that, he could also have knowledge of Omega, Chaos, and that entire system for how the live stream rejoins the overall galactic live stream or universal live stream or whatever you want to call it. Now the one thing that could stop him from bringing it up is the fact that you know, when we reach Cosmo Canyon, Omega and Chaos, not even a concept that's even close to being considered. But we are weaving things in from the compilation of Final Fantasy VII. We've already seen Dirge of Cerberus included in some ways with Vice and Nero and things like that and Deep Ground. So, why not? If anyone in the entire universe of Final Fantasy VII is going to know about this stuff, I'd expect it to be Bugenhagen. But I feel like it's going to be later on in Remake, once we learn more about Sephiroth's goals, that Bugenhagen's definitely going to become a vital resource in getting the information that the party needs. Because if you look at the original game, most of the progression that's made after the collection of the huge materia happens because of Bugenhagen. He's the one that suggests that you go back to the Forgotten Capital. He's the one that unlocks the the secret using the ancient key and you know he he's the one that sees that holy is active a lot of it happens because of him now the next thing is going to be the whole concept of the live stream and memories and again this is something that Bugenhagen barely touches on in the original game but it has become such an integral part of the compilation's narrative that I believe Bugenhagen will have to touch on these concepts in some way shape or form he can't really talk about the live stream unless he does. And if he does talk about the live stream without mentioning it, it kind of indicates that he doesn't know as much as he thinks he does, or as everyone thinks he does. And that'd leave people like Aerith and Sephiroth who have existed within the live stream. They're the ones that have got the more solid grasp of the mechanics. Which, it wouldn't be shocking, but it would kind of diminish Bugenhagen's importance, and I can't see that being the route they go with it. I think he will understand the importance of memory within the live stream. I think it will tie into the cries of the planet and things like that. You know, he would have to assume that there is a degree of consciousness in order for the planet to be in pain and suffering. So he would also have to attribute memory to this as well. We're going a bit weird here, but yeah, I, I'm pretty certain he will touch on these concepts. Outside of already existing concepts in the compilation though, there is one thing that I think Bugenhagen could provide us with a lot more information on. And that's the Whispers. And yes, I, I, I agree, they're not really outside of these concepts as they are the manifestation of these concepts, but you know what I mean. Now, like I mentioned a second ago, we learned in the original game that Bugenhagen's technology can detect and magnify the cries of the planet and make them audible to everybody. Now, if this is still the case, 
And when the Whispers were active, we know from the end of Remake Part 1 that they embody the cries of the planet and, you know, when the dome gets created over Midgar and hear the planet's cries, Sephiroth points it out, everyone reacts to it. So surely Bugenhagen's machinery, even though it is far away in Cosmo Canyon, surely it will have picked up on this. Maybe Bugenhagen's got some data that details the events of the end of Remake. And this could lead to some sort of revelation about what's going on in the world of Final Fantasy VII, because weird things are happening. If Bugenhagen can give us a way to see through the weird things that are happening, then that's going to be a pretty important contribution to the overall narrative of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Either way, I think the first time that we reach Cosmo Canyon and meet Bugenhagen, the amount of information that we get for him is going to touch on a lot of these concepts that have been fleshed out in the compilation. We're going to see a lot more talk about memory being part of the live stream and being an integral part of the live stream. And we could potentially even get some talk about Omega and Chaos. It's possible that we won't get any of that until we've got Vincent in the party. Because then potentially Bugenhagen will be able to pick up on something. Who knows? There is also the possibility that Bugenhagen could end up in danger. Obviously, Sephiroth's trying to hinder the party, or at least he has been in Remake. We don't know what his plan's going to be going forwards now. I don't want to go too deep into Sephiroth territory here, but he accomplished his goals in Remake, but that's going to be the first step of whatever his plan is. So it remains to be seen what's going on with Sephiroth. But it is possible that he still wants to continue hindering the party. And if he wants to do a better job than he did previously, one way to do that would be to take out Bugenhagen. Because he, like I say, he's a vital source of information to the party. Do I think it's likely that we're going to see Sephiroth swooping in and taking out Bugenhagen? No. It's possible. There is every chance that we'll get to see more details of Bugenhagen's time in the Shinra. You know, he used to work with Gast, we can assume, due to the fact that Gast has provided a lot of the equipment that... Bugenhagen's got at Cosmo Canyon, so, you know, it'd be a pretty simple... It, you wouldn't be reaching very far to say that they knew each other and potentially were friendly. And this could be where a lot of Bugenhagen's information on the Ancients has come from as well. It, it remains to be seen how they go about doing that. But one thing is for certain, he is going to be just as important, I believe, in Remake, if not more important than he was in the original game. He's got all of the knowledge that the party need. He's got all of the understanding of the planet. He's got all of the technology that the party could need. Because like I say, there could be data on what went down at the end of Remake. There could be that information just on a computer at Bugenhagen's lab. That could end up being massively important. Massively important. And if we are dealing with some sort of... Maybe not so much alternate reality, but if we are dealing with kind of an existence happening within the live stream, um, you know, like potentially that's where certain people have survived or things like that. There, I don't want to dive too deep into it, but Bugenhagen could potentially be able to pick up on those imbalances in the live stream and maybe even that this, you know, this consciousness is fully individual consciousnesses going about. Like I say, there's a lot of possibilities when it comes to Bugenhagen. We need to get to Cosmo Canyon before we can properly make any big speculation. Because, you know, we need to see what Bugenhagen does. But I think everything that I've talked about in this video is pretty much nailed on that we're going to get. The only possible reaches are like him having data on what happens at the end of Remake. Uh, I'd like that to be possible, but it might be pointless we'll wait and see it could be that he's too far away from midgar to pick up on it but i doubt that because an event like that would have an effect throughout the live stream it wouldn't just be a localized event it would you know cause issues potentially so yeah very interested to see what happens at cosmo canyon don't forget though drop your thoughts in the comments below about this video but also pick who you want me to look at next for the next video and yeah that's about everything there so thank you very much for watching don't forget drop a like on the video and subscribe for future content I, like i've said i can't i can't emphasize it enough how much it helps so if you would do that that would be massive but more importantly than anything have a great day